started off today with a little bit of driving, about an hour's drive actually. We've come to a small little seaside village called Bundoran. It's very chilled here, other than a cafe that we want to visit. Which is called Boys and Gulls. But to get here, we've been driving on what's called the Wild Atlantic Way. Mm. And it is the longest coastal tourist route in the world. It's over two and a half thousand k's long. And basically what that means is it's a beautiful coastal drive yeah. with a whole bunch of different stops which have signposts along Yeah, they've the way. got these really cool little sign posts and it's basically, it's got an N or an S and you're either going north or you're going south. So it sort of keeps it really simple. We've been seeing it for days but mm. we only really properly realise as on the route that we drove this morning to this place, which is really nice. Yeah, there's just colourful buildings, just a very traditional old school style Irish seaside, seaside town. town. A lot of the towns along here are known for its uh, for surfing as well, which is which is really cool. I mean, you'd have to be brave to be going surfing out here. But I was just wondering if are you going to go on the hydro slides? <laughs> Seems like a great idea to get some hypothermia. <laughs> Wow, digging this drive. Probably been on the road for a couple of hours now, do you think? Yeah. See if we can launch up onto this little... Can you come up with me? Yeah. Hey. Ooh. Just been chilling along the, the, the squiggle road. The wild Atlantic, the wild Atlantic way. way. Which is actually really helpful. We, we saw on a map this place called Ross's Point and it just sounded interesting so we've kind of just been cruising along and then I, I just pulled into where maps sort of told us and what I thought might be the spot and we didn't see the sign and I was like maybe I should keep going down and maps had us in the wrong place and the sign brought us right to this sort of cove bay where we I are now. that's what's good about these kinds of drives though is that you don't need to have much of a plan mm. you can just pull over whenever you see a squiggle and you'll be surprised by something but also the locals always have a recommendation like everyone yeah. we've met has been like oh you go north as far as the, <laughs> as far as the what is it the cruel flies yeah, as far as the cruel flies <laughs> <laughs> everyone's been so friendly uh, so true irish folk uh, are the absolute best <laughs> it's just fun this is a lot more of a relaxed chilled exploring sort mm. of day this looks like it's a bit more of a more of a typical beach but some of the coastline that we've just been driving looks so rugged and so raw so it's very, very dramatic, like we mentioned the other day when we are in that uh, Karakari Bridge area. Just raw cliff face and just waves cracking up. But this looks awesome. So, Got to give it to the people of Ireland as well. It doesn't matter what the weather conditions are. I mean, I don't know about raining, we haven't really experienced that, but it doesn't matter how cold it is or how much sun there is. If it's not raining, there's somebody out on the beach and I can see maybe about five or six people out over the other way always out walking their dogs always just if the weather's decent they're kind of out just appreciating it and making the most of it whereas you can come back to New Zealand or other places that we've been in the world it can be sunny decent conditions and people be like no that's not hot enough whereas here it seems like take what you can get it's a beautiful place to be so you got to really get out there and appreciate it We've driven away from the coast now, we've been going through all the tiny farmlands essentially, isn't it really? Yeah, it feels like we've just been driving through people's backyard. We're on the road again exploring today. You say bye? Bye guys. Bye John. Bye John. Margaret. <laughs> yeah John. Have a good one dude. Yeah, yeah you're going for a drive mate. Yeah. Don't no, no. Oh, don't eat that. <laughs> but I think right now we're in 
the center of Ireland, almost about as central as you can possibly get in a small little village called Athleg. Because we were recommended this really cute little cafe. It's bright purple on the outside. You can't, you can't really miss it. It was recommended as part of the Taste the Island sort of event, which is what we've been driving around and exploring for. So if, hopefully you've seen all the other very heavy food videos that we did before this one. But this was kind of our last, last food place to indulge in anyway. <laughs> You can see why we were recommended this place. It's a weekday and it's 1.23 to be exact, 1.23, and it's absolutely packed. It's not just a cafe though, it's like a full-on sit-down restaurant situation as well. So I've been seeing, see we had lots of seafood, but I've been wanting to try a chowder, like a proper chowder. I've got a good hearty bowl here. It seems to be popular because it seems like almost every table somebody's eating the chowder and this is the thing to order apparently. You can see why. I love a good chowder. Chunky, rich, creamy. I'm trying to do it differently because it's hard to keep describing food all of the time but there's a lot of spices and stuff in this one as well which I think balances out the seafoodiness of it which means it's for people that don't like it I think you are actually gonna really enjoy this because it's not like overbearing seafood it's just really nice flavors all together so we've just driven for about 45 minutes into what is more officially the center of the island yes we are heading to a place called dead center brewing and we're we're, going, we're on a mission to find out if that's why they're called dead center <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense it really does this is a really colorful place it's probably one of the more established like more well developed and commercial sort of um or i want to say villages it's not really it's it, more it, of a town it I definitely think. is a town so it's a lot more developed a lot, lot more of a, sort of the, some of the newer designs next to a lot of the brick and there's loads of colour and it's right on, it looks like a river running yeah. through there as well. So I think this is where we're going right here, Dead Centre Brewing. This place is actually, um, it's a brewery and it's a pub all in one, which apparently there's only actually two in um, an island as a whole, the entire country, that actually have both. So we've got all of the stuff there for the brewing as well. This enormous bar and an upstairs area, but we're just about to take a little bit of a, a tour around the, this is the behind the scenes, 30 minute kind of tour of see how these brews are made. This is where we have kind of most of our fun. Okay. So it's a hundred litre brewery and it means that before we brew a big batch, we can test it out here and we can have some fun. So say for example, we have two tanks, both of which are full at the moment. This guy here has a milk chocolate pretzel vanilla stout in it. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, it's... This is experimental did, stuff here. Yeah, we did, we had an Oktoberfest event here this year. Yeah. And as part of your ticket, you got a free soft pretzel. Yeah. But it turns out not everybody likes soft pretzels. So we were left with about 100 pretzels left over. So we ground <laughs> the pretzels up, put them into the mash and brewed a beer with it. So... As part of this tour, obviously, there's like a tasting, we would say like a, a platter or something. What, what was the word? Flight. A, a, a flight. I would say flight. <laughs> <laughs> but Liam obviously just extra, uh, explained this one, which I won't be able to drink much because I am driving, but this is one I was like, me. I'm, up, I'm in there. Oh, mate, that is, a, that is a real journey, isn't it? Isn't it? I think the chocolate is the thing that comes through the, the most for me. So three little samples here, direct from the brewery inside. This one here, 4% sessionable Pilsner. Really soft, really clean, easy to drink. This is our India Pale Lager, it's called Little Victories. It's brewed exactly like a lager, but it's hopped a little bit more like a pale ale. And from there, we actually moved to our pale ale. This is Seeking Sunshine. Lots of wheat in there, so you can see there's quite a bit of haze to the beer. But it has Citra and Amarillo hops in there. So it's quite fruity, a little bit of um, citrus fruit, maybe lemon, lime, some tropical fruit in there as well. A great spot down here. Got the uh, Peter and Paul's church, I think it is. That's the Athlon Castle. Zoom in a little bit. And then we've just found out as well, over there, it's hard to see from this distance, that's called Sean's Bar. Holds the Guinness World Record for the oldest bar in the world. 900 AD. AD. So that is getting right up there. But Stace is sitting there, thirsty. <laughs> I'm waiting patiently to be able to try. So. The process, we asked which one to start with, the lager. When I, whenever I get, get a drink, I have to ask Dan, what do I drink again? And it's always the lager. That's a very nice one too. It's really light. 
And that's a wrap on our time in Ireland. Well, pretty much. We kind of got to go to the hotel now and then we fly. <laughs> we leave tomorrow, but... A couple more logistical things. <laughs> so our next stop is going to be somewhere very exciting, somewhere very different, and somewhere a lot warmer. Drum roll. Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> so the next lot of videos will be from uh, heaps of exploring. Heaps mm. of exploring, but... I think you know we came like we came to Ireland and the goal was to go to to explore around with this taste the island, and it was about food and drink. Mm -hmm. but the people, the people, oh. literally every single human we have come into contact with, has been so kind and so willing to help us out. And they all say when you open the door, you're very welcome here. Yeah, all of them, you're very welcome here, That's and it just makes you go, oh, thank you. Yeah, it does feel really personal. Nothing has felt um, super transactional. No. So if you're Irish and you're watching this, shout out to you because you're you're, cool. you're a legend, and we <laughs> we vibe with you. And if you haven't come to Ireland, you totally should because everybody's welcome. That feels like a cheesy end, but it it, it kind of is what it is. Fade to black. <laughs>